Baby, be in love with your fantasies. I can be a star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we back, back like we, we never left. left. We appreciate y'all for tuning in for another reaction. You yeah. got it? Yeah. Yeah, you got the sniffles. I do. Oh, babe, got the sniffles. <laughs> it's good. But you're going to make it. You're going to be all right. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Uh, but we're about to be checking out Judge Joe Brown. He actually sitting down doing an interview. And in this interview, it looks like he's, he's speaking in regards to, uh, to Donald Trump, just in regards to... Is Trump a racist or not? Mm. Uh, but he's also going to speak on a, a, a multitude of other things regarding uh, Biden, Obama, Lolo, Satoro, uh, and things of that nature. But I definitely wanted to check this one out. Judge Joe Brown sitting down having an interview. Lolo uh, Satoro. Who is that? Lolo Satoro. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure. Okay. But yeah, definitely wanted to check this one out with Judge Joe Brown uh, speaking in regards to Trump and if he's a racist or not. All right, you ready? Yeah, make sure, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification Definitely. bell, y'all. My allergies are on thirty today. Okay, yeah. not ten, but thirty. <laughs> I've been trying to get it under control all day, and and you, it just is not happening. It's all good. Okay, we got you. It must be the change in weather, cause all of a sudden now I'm having all these allergy issues. Yeah, it's been it's been going on all day. Yeah, last couple of days actually. Literally. What What is your take on Trump? Is Trump a racist? I don't think so. I have talked to a number of black entrepreneurs who back in the late 80s and 90s, were early 90s, were trying to get financing. They couldn't. Somebody told them to go check with Donald Trump. So they come back and tell me they got a loan from Donald Trump. He gave them a term loan. Show up with the interest in the principal, one check. But they had to go see him personally. They independently relate this tale that when they saw him, he said, this is what you're supposed to pay me? This our agreement? Said, yeah. And then tore the check up, shook their hands, and congratulations. Now run your business. And this was when? This was back in the 90s. <laughs> see, most people don't even know this. He had a sister. He was, every time you saw him back in the 90s, fine Paper bag, brown, beautiful black model. He likes fine women. <laughs> he didn't have any problem with dating a black woman, walking her down red carpets. So, I mean, she says he's not a racist. He just doesn't like many people, black or white. And he appreciates people who do stuff within their lane. Uh, well, not stay in their lane, but where they choose to be, if they do it well, he admires them. Black, white, brown, red, yellow. Most people don't know this. He did was the finance man behind Jesse Jackson's two runs for president. Wow. Wow. So, you know, he talks. That was in the 80s. I remember being, I remember being a kid and Jesse Jackson coming to our church around that time with the campaign run trying to go for president. Yeah, and, and the whole church being packed because he was there, and that was the eighties. I remember that being the eighties. That was when he was running for president. Wow. But I don't mind somebody talking. I think we've gotten in too sensitive to that. That's part of the effeminization of the country. I remember in junior high and high school. Hey man, I won't say nothing, man. But last night when I saw your mama, man, you don't know I was over there because you were asleep, man. But blah 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 blah. We ran the dozens. That was our sport. Mm -hmm. So we were used to talking about each other. Now, man, he talked about my mama, man. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. do, do you think uh, Trump will get reelected? I think he's going to get reelected. Uh, this impeachment mess we've got right now, there's a thing called the U.S. Constitution, and the Constitution says the president is the chief diplomatic officer of the United States. It puts no limits on his discretion. It simply says that if he comes up with any treaties, they have to be ratified by the Senate. If a treaty is ratified by the Senate, it becomes part of the supreme law of the land. The president and other elected and appointed officials are under oath required to follow the law of the land. 
the State Department, Secretary of State are part of his cabinet and are essentially advisors to the president. He's the boss. Wait a minute. Does he is he talking about the discretion of like like everything that's happening in terms of like the paperwork and stuff that, that they said was missing and the documents or whatever it was that he took? Because I've seen that multiple times in terms of like people explaining that, you know, it was up to his discretion in terms of like what he felt was, you know, not supposed to be taken or whatever, you know, and vice oh, versa. Oh, just things that can I, be... I don't know if that's what he's referring to or not in particular, though. Yeah, just things in regards to what can be classified and, and some, like, in some cases, some documents that are, like, classified. Yeah. Like, like has a high right. classification. You can declassify it right. based on his discretion. I think that's what you're speaking right. about. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So, if that's the case, then... I don't know how much of a fight they're going to have if that's the case. Like, if he was mm. able to, like, you know, I guess appoint his discretion on what he felt was classified and not mm -hmm. classified when he left. I mean, that's going to be a, a battle to the end because, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I just, like, feel, I, I just feel like that's like an internal battle uh, between, like, the Democrats and the Republicans. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Democrats going after the Republican Party. So what he does relative to Biden is simply what is allowed and mandated by the Constitution, specifically Article 1, Section 8, that says the president is charged with, quote, enforcing the law of nations. We have an Interpol treaty with various European states and also one specifically with the Ukraine that requires that we basically investigate, apprehend, prosecute, extradite criminal elements and criminality. Mm -hmm. So Biden out of his own mouth, and I've heard this tape twice, uh, January this year, he says, well, 19, 2019, he says, I guess I broke some laws, <laughs> extortion. I told the Ura uh, Ukrainians if they didn't get rid of this uh, the prosecutor. Prosecutor's there. name yeah, is Skola. The Skola, the I think. Anti-corruption prosecutor. Yeah, he Ukraine said if you don't get rid of him, we'd withhold eighty-five billion dollars in loan guarantees. So his son, who had just been discharged for the military for being a junkie, uh, had a drug problem, had no history in business. He affiliates with this, and at the time, Biden was in charge of the U.S.'s Ukrainian posture and relations. Uh, Obama had assigned him that. And by implication, he brought Obama into committing a crime in office, which is a felony. It's extortion. He committed one extortion by his own mouth, uh, threatening to withhold 85, million in, 85 billion in loan guarantees if they didn't get rid of this prosecutor who was zeroing in on that corporation that his son had just been hired to represent after Biden. The thing that you was, you was telling me about a while back. Yeah. In regards to Biden's son. I remember you were bringing that up to me in regards to yeah. him. Yeah, I told you like that. there was something, it's something really deep like into that whole like situation because I'm like, yeah, whatever we were talking about at that time because I, I was trying to explain it to you, but I didn't know. You're like, talking about Hunter, right? Yeah. Right, right, the, right. The complete, Hunter Biden. Yeah, don't you, don't say his name, okay? Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> allegedly, y'all. Hunter, 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 Hunter. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah, no, it, it, it runs deep. And that's why yeah. I was just like, it just seems like there's a lot of questions in regards to like the things that we're doing just as a country, like, you know, in terms of like our, our government and how things are being done. I just don't completely agree with them because it's all, it's just, I don't know. I just don't think that there's some things that are being done that are for the people. I, right. I just don't think that, <laughs> you Man, know, I don't, I've been, I mean, thinking that, I've been thinking that for a long time. Respectfully, you know, however that comes off, but I just don't think that things that we're doing are completely for the country, especially for yeah. American people in general. Got you. There's always some underlying business businesses going on. That's you know. Yeah. That that's usually like in regards to like out for self. I guess you could say. Right. But per that, personal. But game. that was my question. And see, when when like when that was brought to the forefront before, like the things the dealings that he was doing, like they kind of kept all that stuff under wraps. You mm -hmm. haven't heard a lot about that, like. Why are we not talking about it? I didn't it? until you kind of like brought it, brought it, brought <laughs> it up, and it came across my radar. 
because other than that, I didn't really hear much of it. It's like I heard some chatter, but it, it, it wasn't. It's questionable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, if there isn't a crime there, why aren't we asking questions is my thing. And if we are asking questions, why aren't the people being even told yeah. what's going on? That's what, Ju- that's what Judge Joe Brown bringing up right now, too. Yeah, that's it. Adden Sr. had uh, been assigned by the president the task of dealing with Ukrainian diplomacy. So, son gets $18.5 million out of it, and he has no background other than a dishonorable discharge from the armed services for drug abuse. But Damn. One last question. Do you think black people are missing an opportunity with Trump? Yo, yeah. See, you've got somebody that is not a lifetime Republican. He's been a blue dog Democrat for most of his life. He usurp the Republican Party. So I think this thing I've been tweeting about, no benefit, no vote, ought to be the deal. We haven't gotten a damn thing out of the Democratic Party for a long time. And the last one, number 44 and the one before that, 43, Bush and Obama, well, there are pictures of Bush with his arm around uh, eight-year-old Barack Obama because his stepdaddy, adopted daddy, Lolo Sotoro, had done a lifetime worth of business with the Bushes. Uh, wow. Uncle George Herbert Walker. Wait, what? Yeah, I didn't. I never heard of that. Huh. I'm gonna look that up. He said Lolo Sotoro. So Lolo Sotoro is Obama's Step-dad? stepfather. Put his arm around uh, eight-year-old Barack Obama because his stepdaddy, adopted daddy, Lolo Sotoro. His stepdad. I never knew about that. That's new to me. Had done a lifetime worth of business with the Bushes. Uh, Mm. Uncle George Herbert Walker, after whom George Herbert Walker Bush, Bush Warren president, was named, founded Halliburton in 1946 in Oklahoma. And Lolo Sotoro had been international executive vice president for Standard Oil. There, there was talk of him being a CIA asset. Oh, well, yeah. Indonesia. See, he ran mm-hmm. the death squads for the Indonesian army. On mm-hmm. his own call, anyone could be assassinated. So when George Herbert Walker Bush became head of the CIA under the Ford administration, he just got with his old buddy in the oil business, Lolo Sotoro, and pulled off the hits. See... Uh, Barack's grandmother has been acknowledged as being the woman that operated the channels through which CIA money went to the Southwest Pacific. So she introduced her daughter, who had just had Barry, Barack, to Lolo Sotoro, and they got married, and Lolo Sotoro adopted Barack Obama. The name was changed to Barry Sotoro. Mm-hmm. Now, when he went to high school in Hawaii, I know about that high school. I almost sent my oldest son to it. I could afford it, but I didn't think he observed, deserved it. 20 years ago, the tuition was $95,000 a year, wow. not including room and board. When Obama went there, I've talked to two of his classmates. They independently state that the tuition, not including room and board, was 45000 Now, Business Insider reports his income for 2017 at over $200 million net. That's after taxes, deductions, write-offs. Mm-hmm. For this last year, 2018, they reported it as $570-plus million dollars. And that's after all deductions, tax, right? Trump doesn't make that net. I mean, even some of the richest people in America don't make that. Why? Because when his stepdaddy died, he was one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. And he left everything in a trust fund, operated out of Indonesia, so the American government can't touch it, that makes Barack Obama one-third beneficiary for the assets of one of the 10, 15 richest men on earth. See, so... (laughs) My head is spinning right now. We got a game run on us. So, you know that little thing that Bush W. does when he gets with Michelle, they giggle and he gives a candy. The inside thing, is that supposed to be the same kind of candy he used to give to her husband when he was six, seven, eight years old? Oh, wow. What? No way. (laughs) No.
Damn, that was a lot of that was a lot of information right there. <laughs> but that, that, I, 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 so wait. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was okay. not, I, I was not aware of all of that. But you know, you know, it, it really sounded like you know, in regards to Judge Joe Brown, like, like he's been around for a while. So I feel like some of the things and some of the stories that he was saying in regards to like Trump and how, uh, how he feels that he's not racist, like. Like, like, I feel the same way too because if, if you knew Donald Trump like in the '90s, like you know, I didn't I, obviously I don't know Donald Trump, but I you know the things that I've heard about him and how how I, how how he, how he had been ingratiated by the black community in the '90s, yeah. like I never thought that Donald Trump was racist. The only time that the, that that actually issue ever came up was when he became president. Yeah, but. In like the nineties, the two thousands, like the black community loves some Donald Trump. Yeah. And Donald Trump loves some black loves the black community in the music too. Videos. He's in the music video. <laughs> he's in, in the in the in the song. So I, I felt like, you know, the black community celebrated him way, way early, early on. And it wasn't based on, you know, him being white or being a, a rich white man. It was more along the lines of the things that he's kinda uh, aligned himself with in regards to like the black community. Mm. That would make sense. So, I didn't even so know I never really, that, though, I never really, I never really seen him up. as as a racist. Even like in the nineties and the two thousands, the only time it ever really came up an uh, issue was you know when he became president and the media talked about it. But outside of that, I know ne- I never really had like any actual account of anything that that I've seen just sitting here watching, you know, over the the, the totality of my of my life, like the nineties, two thousands. You know, I, I never saw anything where I was like, ah, that's racist. You know, yeah. the only thing, that, the only hiccup that I saw was when, you know, the business dealings in regards to like uh, the places he had in regards to like renting out, um, you know, apartments and things of that, that that nature. The tenants, when he caught, you know, the, when he, he caught that lawsuit behind like tenants saying that it, it was racially motivated. Yeah. Like that's the only thing that I saw that, that came up like in recent memory, like in the last, you know couple years five six seven years yeah but 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 prior to him having like you know political endeavors like i I never saw anything regarding like racism regarding him but another thing that was interesting is lolo satoru i'm either looking to see who lolo who lolo is yeah that's why i was like who is lolo who is that talking about (laughs) indonesian offshore accounts well i mean a beneficiary to to, to, to a third. So what is he alluding to? Like, you know, like where I got some money that he didn't have to pay taxes on or something or what? Or along the lines of maybe he was more, um, I don't know, maybe he was already more, I don't know. See, but how would he know, know about the grandmother having all these and the candy and the, like what? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's too, that's too, like, maybe he, Maybe he kind of like, Bloviating a little bit. Man, I don't know. I don't know how you would know about what he and his grandmother was doing back then, and and how she would get the candy <laughs> from the man down the street at the grocery store, and and they was dealing with Bush. I yeah. don't know nothing about that. Yeah, and even when him speaking about a Lolo Satoru, I have no <laughs> idea what that <laughs> is, y'all. Like, how did he come up with something that. like that? I'm not saying it's not true, y'all, but I'm just saying. Yeah. That's that's too like that little piece. That's too that's too detailed for me for me to be like, come on, yeah. candy. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he had to have been like a no, fly on man. the wall, I guess. Yeah. And, and I don't know, maybe he's speaking in regards to Barack, maybe saying that he was more privileged than maybe, you know, maybe he came off to be early on in, in his life because he's speaking about the high school that he went to when he when he lived in Hawaii where, you know, room and board was, was pretty expensive. But, yeah, I, I never heard anything in regards to that. So th- th- that's something that's new to me, that I, I, I've never heard anything about Lolo Satoro or – Anything about Obama being like a beneficiary to one of the richest men in the world. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Okay. All right. Well, y'all let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. Give us your thoughts on this as well. And if y'all enjoyed this, be sure you give us a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Join this family, y'all. And if ain't nobody else told you, we love you. And we're going to see y'all in the next video, y'all. Y'all be easy. Yeah. (laughs)